So what happened during the 2016 election? Hillary Clinton is still trying to figure it out, and her list of excuses for losing keeps growing. This time, she again insults the millions of Americans who didn't vote for her. I won the places that are optimistic, diverse, dynamic, moving forward, and his whole campaign, Make America Great Again, was looking backwards. You know, you didn't like black people getting rights. You don't like women, you know, getting jobs. You don't want to, you know, see that Indian American succeeding more than you are. Whatever your problem is, I'm going to solve it. Hillary's laundry list of excuses for a 2016 election loss racking up to 42 and counting. So will she ever just accept responsibility? Look at that list right there. Here to debate is Director of Urban Engagement for Turning Point USA, Candace Owens, and Fox News contributor and 2008 Clinton campaign advisor, Jamu Green. Thank you, ladies, for being with us. Thank you for having us. Good You're morning. welcome. Candace, I'll start with you. Did, you. did you find her comments offensive? I mean, she said that you, if you support, if you're a Republican, you're looking backwards. Uh, you don't like black people getting rights, and you don't like women getting jobs. You know, I think we've moved past offense. It's just insufferable at this point. I don't, I don't know when she's going to go away. What this proves to us is that the Democrats do not have a platform to stand upon in 2020. It's going to be more or less the exact same doubling and tripling down on the tactics of race baiting. And quite frankly, America is tired of it. It's time to move on and close this chapter entirely. Jamu, you were one of her campaign advisors. What would you advise her now? Well, first I have to address the leap of logic I just heard. Um, Hillary Clinton answered some questions, and I think we have to look at that list and add one more, Ainsley, because it should probably be 43, and that additional number is Hillary Clinton herself. She and should blame she herself? She has said that. No, she has said that. She has taken responsibility on numerous occasions. I think it is in the best interest of Democrats to look at everything that is on that list as we see the democratic norms that make America great coming under a full force attack. So it is, it is a good thing for Democrats to analyze that, maybe more behind the scenes than in front of the camera. But Hillary Clinton has every single right to answer questions, to talk about her race. Uh, you know, trying to describe it as being bitter and angry, I find that to be uh, really a little bit sickening. And what Hillary says is not what the Democratic Party says. Those two things are not necessarily connected, Jimu, even though Jimu, Republicans I find that to be that really to be. disingenuous for you to stand up there as a black American and defend the Democratic Party when we understand that over the last 60 years, they have completely decimated our communities. That is not an opinion. That is a matter That's of a ridiculous. fact. Single motherhood is up That's, 71%. That is, that is 100% <laughs> a fact, a fact that single motherhood is up 71% since the 1960s. We also see that in every major area, urban areas, where you guys have a strongholds, our communities are decimated, okay? We have high crime rates. We have black people dying and killing one another. So I, I find your entire platform oh, here to be completely disingenuous, okay? Donald Trump represents the very first opportunity for black Americans to jump off of this ideological <laughs> slave ship that is the Democratic Party. And quite frankly, oh, you goodness. should be ashamed that you're over here laughing at what our community is going through. I won't put up with that. That's I, ridiculous. I, I'm laughing at your your lies. Those um, aren't lies. Those are facts. Think, facts are not <laughs> lies, Jamu. I think I Facts think are not lies. Seventy-one percent is a single motherhood To go back to this rate. discussion, to go back to the discussion about Hillary Clinton, the fact that Donald Trump has actually tweeted about Hillary Clinton ninety-one times since he defeated her. Ninety-one times. Now go back Ainsley. and count how many so times she's spoken when, about Donald Trump Republicans since he defeated her. Say, you just want her to go away. It's actually, that, that's a joke. And, Jamu, and it's, it's not just Republicans saying that. So, Jamu, I want to read you this. Patty Sol, uh, Solis Doyle, she worked on the campaign mm -hmm. as well. I'm I know sure Patty. you know her. So, she's now saying Hillary Clinton, by making these comments in India, is putting Democrats in a tough position that now Democrats have to distance themselves from her remarks and from her. Do you agree with that? 
I, I think Democrats are going to have to run extremely local races, exactly like we saw Connor Lamb run in Pennsylvania, why he is now currently on top. And it is not going to be about Hillary Clinton. It shouldn't be about Donald Trump. It is going to have to be very localized messages to those voters, and many of them that are Democrats who are coming out in higher, more enthusiastic numbers. So this is not going to be a national election if Democrats want to win in November. Candace, do you think it's time for Democrats to separate themselves from Hillary Clinton? Um, absolutely they should, but they're not going to because they have the exact same messaging as her, which is that they hate Trump. There is no other platform that they are standing on because none of their policies make That's sense. Ridiculous. And unfortunately, Jimmy Green, you keep calling this ridiculous, but the only thing that is ridiculous is that people like you, like Al Sharpton, like Jesse Jackson, continue to sell out our community, which has been hurt over the years by Democratic policies. Absolutely 100%. It is time to move on from the Democratic narrative as black Americans entirely. All right, Jimmy, I'll let you respond and then we're going to go. Well, I, I don't think it's appropriate to make personal attacks on, That's on not a your personal show, attack. Ainsley. I, I think that the Democratic Party um, gets a large percentage of votes from the African American community because, especially African American women, I happen to be one, they're pretty politically savvy. So they're looking at who is the party that is going to best provide them health care? Who is the party that is going to make sure that when you've got white supremacists marching in the street, you're not sitting there saying that there are good people amongst them? Okay. Who is the party that has been there for them? All emotion, and no will logic protect here. Social Security and Medicare. These are the things that drive those There's no votes message. for the party. There's no Bacon. message. No it message whatsoever. Candace, here. Jamu, thanks so much for coming on with us. We'll have to have you on again. Great Thank debate. You. Thanks, Ainsley. You're welcome. Tommy Laren's with us right now. We have her exclusively this morning. Welcome, Tommy. Th Good Tammy, morning. thanks for getting up with us. Oh, of course. You know, I'm still on the high from President Trump visiting my state. I think he made it a little greater, so it's a great morning. Great day to be an American. <laughs> what did you make of him taking a shot at your governor out there, Jerry Brown, saying he's doing a terrible job? I thought he actually was very restrained in his approach. I would have had many more things to say about our lovely governor. So I think that President Trump did a great job of reining it in. All right, very good. Uh, like many people, I was stunned at the remarks that came out of India. And I believe that Hillary Clinton's remarks in its entirety were by far even worse than when she called Trump voters a basket of deplorables. Here is how it sounded. You know, as she looks to continue pr to promote her book and make sense of her loss. Plus, we're also going to play her campaign manager right after her. Wow, that's a surprise. His whole campaign, Make America Great Again, was looking backwards. You know, you didn't like black people getting rights. You don't like women, you know, getting jobs. You don't want to, you know, see that Indian American succeeding more than you are. Whatever your problem is, I'm going to solve it. This. This was bad. Uh, you know, I can't, I can't sugarcoat it. Uh, she was wrong, and clearly it's not helpful uh, to Democrats uh, going into the midterms and certainly not going into 2020. She's put herself in a position where uh, Democrats are going to have to distance themselves from these remarks and distance themselves from her, particularly those Democrats that uh, are running in the states that Donald Trump won, like Ohio and Pennsylvania yeah. and Wisconsin and Michigan. What's your reaction, Tommy? Well, my goodness. I mean, this woman claims to be the leader of women. She claims to be the ultimate feminist icon. And then she goes ahead and insults white women that we can't think for ourselves. We can't vote for ourselves. You know, further along, she says that we vote because our husbands, our bosses, our sons tell us how to vote. Could there be a more anti-feminist statement than that? I don't think so. But you know what? Every time Hillary Clinton opens her mouth, we are reminded why we voted for Donald Trump. And that makes me feel just a little bit better. But right. the Democrats, is it incumbent on Democrats to rebuke her? After World. They have an election to win in November, and right now she is the most popular Democrat in the country. Why, until someone steps up, we assume everybody believes that on the Democratic side. Well, there are some, certainly on the far left, that do believe with that. But I think if the Democratic Party wants to win, they're definitely going to have to distance themselves from that because they still need to win middle America. They might have a real disdain for middle America, but they still need to cater to us. They still need to care about us. And when she goes and makes those comments, I think it makes them sweat a little bit. I really do.
Well, it was very unfortunate. Speaking of uh, unfortunate comments, uh, Joy Behar a couple of weeks ago was on the show and she was talking about uh, Mike Pence and how Mike Pence had said that he uh, has a conversation with God frequently. And then she said, well, I believe that, and I'm paraphrasing her joke, uh, people who uh, hear voices like that are, are mentally ill. And obviously she was taking a shot at... Uh, Hundreds of millions, Ainsley, of Christians. I know. So the vice president was on with Sean Hannity two nights ago, Tommy, and you probably heard what he said. He said he accepted her apology on the phone because she called him, but he wanted her to go on air yesterday and said, I hope that she apologizes to the tens of millions of Americans that, that she offended as well. And yesterday she did apologize. Listen to this. Oh, I think Vice President Pence is right. Um, I was raised to respect everyone's religious faith, and I fell short of that. I sincerely apologize for what I said. Are you buying it? What do you think? I think it might be a little bit too late, but hey, I have to give her some credit. At least she did it. As you know, it was about a year ago that I was on The View. I sat right next to Joy Behar. I've got to say, I disagree with everything that the woman says. I do think she's a good person. I would hope that the apology is genuine, but I'm happy that ABC made her do it, even if it was forced. I give ABC a round of applause for that. I didn't expect him to. Yeah, evidently, Bob Iger sat down there with a bunch of investors, and they wanted, uh, they wanted an explanation for her comment, and he basically had none. Doesn't that to turn around to the talent and put the pressure on her to speak up well, I would hope so, and, and I would hope that in the future, their commentators, especially on The View of all places, would keep that in mind, because there are probably a lot of viewers out there that happen to be Christians, and then, you know, to Hillary's comment, white women as well, so they really need to watch what they say if they want to have an audience. Well, coming up, uh, the audience of The View is going to see the former FBI director, James Comey, sitting around the coffee table as well, because he's going to be out promoting his new memoir. So he's going to go to the ladies of The View to help sell books. What do you think of that? Well, he's going to go to get softball questions and be patted on the back. But these are the same people that had a real disdain for James Comey when they think that he lost the election yeah. for Hillary Clinton. Yes, but now know. he's some kind of a hero. And the reason he's a hero to these people is because they want to see this president and they want to see this country fail. I mean, we watched Joy Behar celebrate when she thought that there was collusion. We watched her celebrate on air. So, of course, he's going to go. He's going to be patted on the back. They're going to celebrate him. But my question for Comey is this. Will you come on Fox News? Will you get some questions from people that might not agree with you? Will you go on with Tucker? Will you go on with Sean? Will you go on with Laura? That's what I'd like to see. You know, and the thing is, Tommy, you brought up a great point. Uh, he should if he wants to sell the book. But number two is he's not going to have an easy time elsewhere because every other person blames James Comey for the Hillary Clinton loss. I think loss. they will ask him some tough questions yes. because they're, they're furious with him. Well, you would think so, but, you know, then again, they think that he's going to still bring down this president. So they're very confused as to what they really want. Uh, it's not what's best for the country, I can tell you that much. There you go. Well, we are inviting him to be on Fox & Friends as well. Will he pick up the invitation? Stay tuned.